some of the wonderful songs from the Prefab Sprout songbook there. They set the charts alight with literate, heartbreaking pop music. And now, after a slight hiatus, Prefab Sprout return with a new single, The Best Jewel Thief in the World. And Paddy McAloon is here now. Hello, Paddy. Hello. How are you? I'm fine, but after a great introduction like that, <laughs> I can only disappoint. <laughs> Don't be saying so, that. So now. I'll leave now. <laughs> and thank you, thank everybody. Yeah, thanks for coming in. We've heard your songs. <laughs> Ta-ra! That was so impressive, yeah. Uh, the song um, that we heard a clip of will play all yeah. the best you'll thief in the world. Yeah. What's the sirens there? Are they chasing the ne'er-do-well down, That's, is it? They are. They're chasing the ne'er-do-well. Yeah. It's a great song, and now you're back. I suppose people say to you all the time, do they, oh, you're back, and you're probably thinking, well, I've never been away. Yeah, to a degree, to a degree, I I think that, but, um, you know, sure, we haven't made any new records in a long time, but I've never stopped writing. That's always been the one thing that keeps me going. I like to write music. The song is about the arrogance of writing well, for a living. Arrogance? Do you think that uh, writers should have a proper job as well? Or um... Well, I think it's, it's, it's more that feeling that um, when you face a blank piece of paper, if you're writing a song, you need to get yourself believing that you're good at it. And there are days where you clearly you don't think that, and you think, you know, will I write another tune? Will I, will I have another good uh, title to work with? So that's really, I think, that's what I think the song is about. But beyond that, it's just a good story of the arrogance of the jewel thief trying to get away with things. But I, th- I think it refers to the songwriter's task as well. Do you accept, Paddy, that you are actually quite good at writing, though? You know, um, you can write rather I, a good song, I, can't you? I think I'm. I think I'm okay. I'm probably not as not as arrogant as people would maybe suppose. I've <laughs> said some daft things over the years along those lines. You know, full of myself. The last album, "Let's Change the World with Music," was out. I think 2009. Yeah, I think so. Now, "Crimson Red." So, what has been happening in those four years? Uh, um, in those four years, I would say that um, I've probably, uh, you know, I've been slowly recovering from an ear problem that I had which still which still affects me but I, I would say that my feeling of despondency and not being able to hear properly that's kind of disappeared I, I sort of feel I, I don't imagine that I'm going to wake up with any terrible trouble in my in my in my right ear uh, so so that kind of positive mood has helped um, and also in that in that intervening time, I've written a whole lot of, of new stuff. And in fact, um, this is really just a, the, the the Crimson Red album, the new record, is basically um, a selection of things that I've done over the years when I've been quiet. You know, it's kind of based on a lot of work done f- since since as early as 1997. Oh right, yeah. Because I mean, the Prefab Sprout back catalogue is extensive. Rumor has it that you have lots of music unreleased. So are are the songs on the latest album all all oh, new? Yeah. Or have you, so you haven't kind of gone back and taken no, songs that I, never saw the light of day? No, what, what I do is I, the songs haven't seen the light of day. Some of them are old songs. I mean, I, I've, I've got to say that even on our first album, Swoon, or on the one that followed at Steve McQueen, the songs were never written in the preceding six months. Some of them were much older. But now I've got years and years to look to look back on. What I have are, are, are an archive of... Um, uh, of, of unreleased material that's in a really primitive form. I don't have many master tapes sitting on a shelf where I could say, well, that's a new album. What I have are a bunch of old cassettes gathering dust. Do you? Yeah, yeah, I still use cassettes. It's I am very retro of you. It's very, very retro. I mean, they're quite reliable, though. Not good quality, <laughs> but you, they, rarely, they rarely break. You know, they're pretty good. I bet you hate MP3s, do you? I don't know. I don't know how to use an MP3. I like digitally recorded sound. I quite think that's quite good. But locating it and losing it, that's what that's you know, you can lose a piece but of it's so easy. I lost so easy. I've lost a memory stick. Somewhere yeah. here. I've lost a memory stick with thousands of songs on it. I exactly. don't know where it is. That's the that's the problem. It's a beautiful idea. I mean I have a little digital recorder and I'll suddenly think, why don't you always just use this when you're writing a new song? You can hear what that chord is, you can hear what the words are. But I would lose the file in a way that I wouldn't with it. When I finished, I use a cassette per song. It's quite, you know, quite extravagant. And I'll have a song and I'll just I'll, I'll, I'll put the cassette Can over you still over. buy cassettes? Yes, you can in most supermarkets. Can you? I sound like an advert here, but you, I didn't you, even you, know don't, that, Paddy you don't Magdalene. get out enough. That's, that's your trouble. <laughs> you, want, you want to get out in the street. Well, I haven't been shopping for cassettes. I've got a box <laughs> load in my garage. What you can't find are the cassette player recorders. That's what's difficult to find. Ah, but, yeah. right. Okay. Um, this is, to all intents and purposes, a solo album, really, isn't it? I mean, you played everything on the album, um, didn't well, you? There are two, yes, I did. There are, two, there are two ways that I look at this, and one is 
it sounds like a, a cold term uh, to apply to your own music. Um, but before we played as a band, even before I played with my brother, I made tapes as Prefab Sprout. Um, we came to what fame we have as, as a band. But I've always thought there's a continuity of the song and the voice. Completely. Uh, you yeah. know, that's, that's yeah. the continual part. And my brother, I have to say that I wouldn't have put this out as a Prefab Sprout record if I didn't have the blessing of my brother, who's the crucial other part of the picture. And he, he, he at least understands my medical history and the idea that when you've been working by yourself for a while, the product that you've got is almost certainly finished because you've been working with machines, you've been putting things down. And this record was, uh, uh, it's a boring detail for most people, but it was contra contractually necessary. I, ha I absolutely had to do this last October. And so oh. I just, I threw myself into it and did it Got really rather it. quickly. Yeah. yeah. And so there wasn't time to say, look, I've, I've made a, a version of this record. Would anyone else like to play on it? That's the main reason that it's just me. Thank you for coming in. I'm going to have a bit more of a chat with you after we've heard the single. Is that all right? Absolutely. Okay. Paddy McAloon from Prefab Spread. And here it is, the best jewel thief in the world. There's the sirens that we mentioned earlier on Prefab Sprout's new song. Best jewel thief in the world. We were just saying, weren't we, if you're listening to that in the car. Now, I wonder how many people in the northeast now are listening to that, thinking, oh, my goodness, there's a police car coming or there's an ambulance behind me. Can I apologise for that? <laughs> it, was, it, was, it was done for an artistic effect. And I, I, I'm not a driver, so I, you, you can curse me all you like. You know, I'm, I won't be looking at you through, the ne through another window, you know. <laughs> when I smart. first started in radio, Paddy, uh, we were told that we could never use the sound effect of, of sirens for that very for reason, that very in case reason. it, you know, made, confused people. it was dangerous. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. So there you go, you've broken the rules again, broke, my yeah, friend. Never, never uh, having worked <laughs> in radio. <laughs> <laughs> At the height of Prefab's success, there you were, finding yourself on Top of the Pops, finding yourself in Smash Hits magazine, selling millions of records. Did you enjoy that kind of giddy heights of pop success um i think uh, collectively as a band we were always thinking um this is uh it could be better and that's I'm, I'm being honest with you in this in this silly way where you're looking at chart positions and you're wondering where you're going to be next week it's stupid it's ignorant it's it sounds ungrateful but I, I have a feeling that most people if you said to them you've got a number one record, I reckon within about four hours <laughs> they'll start worrying where it's going to be next week. Yes, that's exactly. That's yes. my suspicion. Yes, yes. It was like, but no, we, had, we did have some great <laughs> times. We did have some great times. I just sometimes can sound a bit downbeat about that because I remember that anxiety of got to have a new song. And this was record. The, the record company on your back saying, were, oh, look, it's number seven. We need it in they, the top five. They were, they were pre I've got to say, they were, pretty, they were pretty good. You know, I think that, you know, in terms of you'll hear bands criticising the record companies, think so you were always very good with this. But I think it was a self-inflicted uh, lack of pleasure where you think, oh, we need to do more. And, um, you know, you look at other people's sales, which is a silly thing to do. Some of the best records in the world didn't sell very many and copies. You, yes, you shouldn't be getting yourself bogged down in no, that. It's all it's about petty. the music, isn't it? It, it, it is. It really it's not it really about is. whether you're a new entry in the top no, no, ten. No, no, no. it's necessarily. not. Not necessarily. I brought with me here a copy of from Langley Park to Memphis, which a lot of people will have in their collection. Now, when we look at you on the front cover, and we're talking to Paddy McAloon from Prefresh Prep, when we look at you there, yeah. I have to say, your appearance has dramatically changed to, yeah, the, to, to the way you are now. Yeah. Are people surprised to meet you expecting you to be that skinny lad with the curtains <laughs> hairstyle from the from the 80s. 80s i don't know i think i, I think that um I, I can never really read that I, all i know is that that there are an awful lot of children out there who see me in almost this time of year coming up to november or december and they tug at their mother's skirt and they point at me Oh. And they'll go. It happens over and over again. No. Really, especially when I wear little round glasses. They think that you're Father oh, Christmas. They, they think I am, and I will usually say I'm just his uncle. I'm his brother. I'm one of his helpers. I try to, you know, let them down gently. Did you model yourself on Father Christmas? No, I think it's the other way around. I was there, you know. I kind of think, you know, eighties pop stars are kind of the real. <laughs> they, they've got the real. They're the real McCoy, you know. <laughs> But it's a great look, and it's a look that we won't forget. You've always been renowned for being individual, haven't you? And you certainly are that, my yeah, friend. What else have I got going for myself? That's the way I look at it. The reviews for the new album, Crimson Red, have been 
well, extremely positive across the board, I have to tell you. Yeah. Do you read your press, or is it a case of, once it's out there, on to the next I, thing? I, I made a promise that I wouldn't look at any of them this time round, because I thought, if you, if you look at the good ones, you've got to pay attention to the bad, but I, I broke that pretty quickly and started started uh, to look. I see, I noticed that they, they, are, they, are, they are pretty good, you know, they're... I, su- I suppose part of it is that if you don't make many records and someone is a fan of yours, they may be delighted to ha- just have you back. Mm. And if it turns out to be a decent record, then the, they've got a, you know they've got an opportunity to sing your praises for other things. But I'm delighted, honestly. They they are some of them are, are quite so fulsome, really. You've never moved away from the northeast, have you? You've no, always stayed here. No, no, you know it was yeah. I've always stayed around here. We 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 did a little bit of recording in America when we were younger, you know, and and, the, and it surprises me because I like to record. Um, I like to record at home, but on many occasions we record in Hollywood, which it, it, actually, it, it makes me laugh now because I wouldn't dream of going there now. But we did; we used to record there quite a bit. Really strange, but no. Um, as my wife would say, you, she thinks that I live in my head. And where I am doesn't really matter that much. And I think that's probably true, you know. I'm just typing Prefab Spread into our music database. And the three songs that come up immediately, I'd like mm-hmm. to play one of them. Is sure. that all right? Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, since we played King of Rock and Roll earlier, Cars and Girls or yeah. When Love Breaks Down, what do you think? I, I, it's entirely up to you. Is the one that's a favourite out of those two? Um, no. OK, we're going to go for When Love Breaks Down then. That's all right, okay, that's and, and thank you so much for coming in. Thank you. Congratulations for on the thank new you album. So much, and uh, it's been a joy. Great success with it. Pleasure to meet Paddy McAloon. This is BBC Newcastle Radio for the Northeast.